What's up guys and welcome to this, this is your NXT review show, I'm your host LK from the SOS Wrestle Talk YouTube channel, if you haven't done so already hit the like button, drop a comment on your thoughts and opinions on this show and smash the subscribe button, apologies I've been gone as long as I've been gone, I'm awful, I'm embarrassing, I'm ashamed and I'm a scam, but we're here to talk about NXT and if you haven't done so already go check out all of Dion's coverage he's given over the best of Super Juniors tournament go check it out also the state of new japan video yesterday go check that out if you haven't done so already here to talk about some nxt now i haven't watched nxt in a fat off while i've, I've watched the the take the pay-per-views premium live events whatever they want to be called these days i've watched the, i've watched them you know i watched stand and, and deliver thought it was a pretty damn good show and i feel like i just kind of need a reason to watch nxt and it's a bit difficult for me to just kind of sit here and just unwind and watch. So I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to review this show. Get back into it and get in the swing of things and, and give it a review. And that's what I'm going to damn do today. So NXT that took place last night. This is the go-home show for Battleground. I'm going to be giving a preview and predictions video for Battleground. That will be uploaded on Friday. Uh, looking forward to recording that. Um, as well as a Dynamite review, which will be coming to you guys tomorrow. Uh, and that's what I want on this channel. And I, I feel like I've Dion's doing such a great job with New Japan. I feel like if I, if I also add the American Western wrestling, well, then we have everything for everyone. And obviously I'm going to chip in and when big New Japan events occur, when the G1 occurs, I'm going to jump in. But I thought, why not? Because I'm watching it anyway. Well, not NXT. You know, I'm watching the Raw, the SmackDown, the Dynamite. I would say Collision sometimes rampage never ring of honor would rather do anything in this world than watch ring of honor television uh tna and i'm going to talk a little bit about tna so i won't go too much down that rampant so let's get on with this this is the go home show for battleground the purpose of this show the sole purpose is to get you me everyone watching to buy the pay-per-view buy the Peacock subscription, and if you have the Peacock subscription, to watch it, same as the WWE Network. So the show starts off with an earlier today, Ethan Page, he arrives at the arena and agrees with the NXT general manager Ava to sign his WWE contract later on tonight, and and I've been covering pro wrestling in some form of podcast for a long time in the last few years i've been very off and on which i do apologize for uh, just personal situations just keep coming up which prevent me from doing but i feel like we're in the clear i say that every time i feel like we're in a clear but touch wood we stay that way because there's something i really miss and i generally think about it every day regardless back in the day we're talking 2016 17 18 um i used to do the, these shows um daily for a channel called coco sports go check that out if you haven't done so already and subscribe over there and tell them that his boy lk sent him so we i used to watch tna and evolve and review them and i used to always say that ethan page is such a wwe guy it is stupid for him to be elsewhere the guy just has star written all over him if he can get a good backing in NXT, he could do really good things for this brand and really elevate himself as a performer and do good things on Raw and SmackDown. But I also said that about EC3. Now, fuck me sideways. EC3, you know, yeah, he's NWA World's Champion right now. Yes, he's he did some stuff with All Japan recently. Um, but... He kind of went to the main roster, or when I say main roster, obviously I mean Raw and SmackDown, and he done fuck all. He got, he was useless. What a waste of time that was. In that year or two, however long he was wasting away there, he could have been doing good stuff. You know, I, I, I still think that the fact he is doing NWA is probably his personal reason, but I wish he would go back to TNA. You know, his run in TNA with Rockstar Spud was fucking unbelievable. It's what got him the contract. But I, anyway, regardless, I think Ethan Page is the perfect fit for a WWE quote superstar. Then we went to the opening match of the night. We had Stevie Turner wrestling Jordan Grace, the TNA Knockouts champion. It's so surreal. <laughs> Apologies, hay fever is kicking my rear end today. I'm not. I'm not sad or emotional. Um, I'm not unwell. Um, it's just hay fever. It's just really kicking me in the ass. Um, it's just so surreal 
listening to a W ring announcer and and you know Booker T and Vic Joseph keep on saying the words TNA. Um, you know, for so long I, w- I wanted them Impact to go back to the name TNA because I feel like they br- had the biggest market share when it was TNA. So it wouldn't make sense to kind of try and reinvent yourself. So the fact they've gone back to TNA is good. I would, as a fan, love it to go back to six sides, but the wrestlers that apparently the office don't want that, which is fair enough, and I respect that. I've, that the bumps probably hurt a lot more because uh, the way the boards are underneath and aligned, it probably does hurt a lot more, and I don't want you know wrestlers to, to hurt themselves. Um, so I can kind of understand and reason the fact that it is four sides, but with with TNA, I feel like I'm very off and on. And I remember I, I covered the the show in, in January when the... Uh, Hard to Kill, when they re-became TNA, I covered the first month or so weekly shows of TNA, and it was just kind of one of those really strange situations where I just, and I get this a lot with, you know, with TV shows as well, it's kind of, you get into it, and then it's just like, oh, they may have, the the first few matches of the next week could be bad, and then I'm like, ah, fuck that, whereas if I review them, if it's shit, I can just come on here and say it's shit. So I'm, I really want to get back into TNA um, and start covering it as well. Because I did enjoy, well, I'm assuming they're still doing some good things. But I did enjoy what they were presenting and giving. Um, and before the bell, uh, Roxanne Perez comes out and she joins commentary. Um, and the sole purpose of this match is to show the world. And what I mean by that is to show the kind of, uh, this is cringe as fuck, the WWE universe, uh, who John Grace and what she can do in the ring. Uh, it's pretty much a squash match. She's got the woman, the juggernaut driver. Um, it built her up for the time match. No complaints there, but it's really good for TNA. And I really hope it does help them with numbers because, you know, NXT 600, 700,000 people do watch that. It's free advertising for them, especially if they liked what they saw with Jordan Grace. And they're going to be on. She's going to be on the uh, the pay per view on the weekend. So touch wood, it, it can thrive, and and that TNA can also gain from it by having NXT guys on their show, which will then not only help the NXT talent because they're getting more ring time and and more TV time elsewhere. It also helps TNA build as a brand. But and then post match, uh, Perez and Grace got a little bit physical. Just a little tease heading into the pay per view on Sunday. Then we have Trick Williams, he arrives at the PC. One thing I do want to say as well, the NXT does really well. There's nothing dull. What I mean by that is there's never nothing happening. There's always something going on in some part of the PC. It's not some robotic interview going, Hello, Rey Mysterio, are you looking forward to your world championship match against Damian Priest tonight? Yes, I am. Like, you don't get it. It's not like that. It's kind of cameras kind of just being there while wrestlers are talking, which I really like. Um, so Trick Williams, he arrives, uh, says he's going to slap the ego out of Ethan Page, and then Lash Legend is there. She basically breaks up with Trick because she wants to focus on the Women's NXT North America Championship. He's like, nope, I completely understand. You go for it. I'm going to do my thing. You do your thing. Adios, amigo. <clears throat> which was fine. But again... They're just following on with story. And it's nothing but story the whole time. And that's one thing I do like. And, I, and I'm honestly annoyed at myself for not watching NXT sooner. You know, I was so in love with the black and gold NXT. I, I really was, especially covering it weekly. I really did it. And the takeovers were so special. But it changed to 2.0. And, and Vince got his dirty, scrubby hands all over that shit. It turned into just pure piss. Like, I would rather drink piss than have to watch any of the 2.0 episodes of NXT. Imagine that two hours live with commercial breaks. Oh, fuck off. No chance. Some of that stuff was fucking brutal. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies. Uh, preventing myself from sneezing there. Um, then we're also backstage. Where it's just kind of this dark ring setting. And there's loads of PC recruits kind of sitting there. And Ty Dillinger, he's there trying to give them advice. And Josh Briggs walks in saying, you're, you're, you're trying to manipulate the man. What are you doing? And then Dylan just basically just says, fuck off. <laughs> Obviously he doesn't say that, but he says, fuck off, and we move on. Something so small that felt, even my notes there, fuck off and we move on. But later on, it led to some story development. So there's little seeds that they plant here, and it's just really good stuff. It is really good. It's not, this show wasn't amazing. 
I would give it a, a strong tie, weak win if you caught me in a good mood. Very weak win, but a very strong tie. There's nothing bad about it. It's watchable. And I, I feel that there wasn't that much great in-ring work simply because we're building up. It's the go-home show for the people, as I said at the top of the show. The purpose of this show is to get you and me to watch. <coughs> and then we had the NXT Women's North American Championship Summit. Uh, Booker T was hosting this one. He's so good. I enjoyed the living daylights out of Booker T uh, all on this show. I, I really did. It was He's just really funny. He's entertaining. He's making the crowd do the shucky ducky quack quack. It's just really entertaining. Um, so they all have 30 seconds to really kind of give a, a sell of themselves as to why they, they will win. Uh, so Mia Yim, she says she's the most experienced in the ladder match, so she will win. Cool. Uh, Jaden Parker, she says that this isn't the black and gold, Mia, this is the future. Cool. Good promo, though, but by Jada Parker. I think she's the best one out of the lot there on the mic. Uh, Fallon Henley basically said she don't care about anyone in the ring, which is her advantage, because she'll do anything to them to be able to climb the ladder and take the belt. Sweet. Uh, Kalani Jordan said no one is willing to take the risks like she is, which is why she will win. Uh, Kala, uh, Saul Rocker then cuts a very below average promo, basically saying she'll win. Um, I really couldn't give two fucks. And then Lash Legend. Now, I'm going to get some heat for this one, so I'm going to take a swig of this fucking can of uh, Coke Zero. I'll tell you, we got a good deal. Now, this is what happens on this show. I, I go off the rails. What, what I mean by that is... Every now and then, something I'll look at something around me, and then I'll take a tangent, and we'll be talking about it for five minutes. So buckle in. I got a Coca Cola Zero can, and yesterday at, the, at a uh, at a uh, supermarket here in the UK, we got twenty four cans for six pound. What a deal! That is LK's bargain of the day. What a bargain! Right, so Lash, Lash, Lash Legend. Let's get down to this one. Again, remember this is going to be frank. Obviously, I've seen Mia Yim for years. The other five, I think this is the first time I've seen them. I'm a bit just being frank or remember seeing them. And Lash Legend, she just starts screaming. Um, you know, she's got she's screaming, saying she's gone from potential to champion and... I thought it was just too loud, it was too much, it was quite annoying. If that's kind of the purpose of the character, to be annoying as fuck, then she's doing a phenomenal job. But if that's not, she is. that is literally one of the most annoying things I've ever fucking heard in my life. It truly was. I just wanted to tell her to shut up. <coughs> but the best one was Jaden Parker. In my opinion, that was the best one. She cut a promo, it sounded like... She meant it. It sounded real and genuine. Um, I, I dug dug that one. And then we had Charlie Dempsey, who is William Regal's son. Uh, he's looking in the mirror and doing, you talking to me? Um, and then Damon Kemp and Miles are there. And Dempsey just keeps making them say capiche. I don't know if that's something I've missed, because I don't watch it weekly. But I didn't get it. I, I was just there like, what the fuck is that? It's trying something new, I guess, and, you know, it's the son of William Regal, and William Regal did some crazy shit, um, and, and kind of entertaining things like that, but I, I'm not too sure what the purpose of that was, because I was confused. Then we had Thea Hall against Jasmine Nix, uh, Hale, sorry, uh, Thea Hale, uh, Hale was part of, uh, Chase University, uh, sort of back and forth opening exchange there, uh, until Nix takes control, um, as uh, Hale went up for an up and over, and Nick's kicked her in the midsection. Um, Chase Uni then come out, and they told they were told that they said sorry that they won't be involved in the matchup, but they came out anyway, which allowed Nick to hit a Pele to get the win. It was an alright match, nothing magical, but nothing bad. It was, it was solid, it wasn't offended, nothing to get angry about. It was fair enough. Interested to see where they go with this Hale and Chase Universe. Actually, that's a lie. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give two fucks. That's because I don't tune in every week. Maybe in, in two months' time, I'll be sat here crying. Oh, don't leave the university. 
Get your degree, you schmuck. Um, they then show uh, the OC, Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows attacking Nathan Fraser and Axiom, who are the NXT tag champs, uh, basically in the merch stand, but the merch stand is outside of the PC. And again, just using different parts of the building. You know, it's really good stuff. And it made me want, it made me look forward to it. I'm like, okay, you know, OC attacking them. Can they win the tag? I hope they do. Um, I really do. Huge fan of Gallows and Anderson. And it's such a shame that they've just been doing fuck all in, in WWE. They really have. I hope they're making good money to do fuck all as well. Um, I enjoyed, really enjoyed their time in TNA. I really did. And their stuff in New Japan before was, was really good. Um, I'll get de- I don't want to kind of go too in heavy with my battleground predictions because I'm actually going to do a video on that. Um, and I'm probably going to record it after this just so I kind of got it in the can. That's one thing I want to do more of is kind of do these shows but do it in a in a massive stint so I kind of have some in the backlog because I can do- nothing's going to change until Sunday because this is the go home show so I have I can upload it on a Friday on a Saturday and it'll be absolutely fine. Then we have Josh Briggs his music hits. Uh, he gets, but he's getting attacked by Dillinger backstage. They did this really cool thing where um, Briggs music hits, nothing happens, and the cameraman then runs to the backstage area to try and look for him. But you, you, you as the viewer, are staying with it and following him on this journey to the backstage area, which I thought was really good. Um, and he's being attacked by Ty Dillinger, and that's one thing I think this year, especially with Kevin Dunn uh, being gone from the company, everyone's like, oh, I wonder how it'll be without Kevin Dunn, it's better, we all knew it was better, we're here without Vince, it's better, it's, it's, it is, and you can't, anyone who's, you know, a fan of wrestling that, that watches these shows can't say it sucks anymore, because the booking is good, the wrestlers is some of the best, one of the best rosters in the world, some of the finest talent in the world, and there's good stories, you know, and we'll go, we'll go to Raw here. So I, was, I watched Raw. I didn't cover it, but I watched Raw. They're building to Money in the Bank, and they're building to SummerSlam, and they're building to Clash of the Castle. Just golden. Just I like that. It's it's you're excited for multiple things. It's just it's really good stuff. Um, but anyway, um, Javon Evans then he attacks uh, Dillinger. Uh, they take it to the ring. Uh, Javon Evans hits this really nice suicide dive. Uh, Dinger then throws him into the steps, and the refs come out to stop him. And then Javon Evans hits, and I tell you this now, my friends, you need to go out of your way. Whether you look it up on Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, however, pause the video, go watch it. He hits the most incredible springboard cutter I have seen in 20 years of watching wrestling. I mean it, it was a thing of beauty my friends, it was fucking gorgeous, what a move, that was unbelievable, just incredible, what an athlete, that guy is going to be a star, and it was presented as well, it was literally presented as if this guy is going to be the man, and and I really dug it, and I I hope that him and Dill- Dillinger have a banger, and that we do get... Um, Hopefully at the pay per view. I, I mean, it wasn't made. Of, it didn't. It wasn't announced on the show. Maybe it could just be for an NXT special. Who knows? Then we went on to the NXT Heritage Cup. We had Damon Kemp against Tony D'Angelo. Uh, D'Angelo is the holder of the Heritage Cup. <coughs> Apologies. I really should have uh, took a, a tablet or something before I started. But I'm that level of professional where I won't edit that out. I think it's real. Makes it sound like it's just a conversation. So Heritage Cup rules, if you aren't familiar, is there's six three-minute rounds and two falls are required to win. So let's just break this down round by round. Won't take us too long. Um, round one was basically loads of quick covers from Kemp uh, until D'Angelo hit a Fishman's Buster uh, to get the first fall. Uh, the second round, uh, Kemp... Oh, God, it was picture by picture, by the way, which I, I, I don't know how you Americans do that. We don't have that over here in the UK, that picture by picture. Fuck off. Just put the advert on full TV so that I could go have a piss and fill up my cup of tea or fill up my, my alcoholic beverage or grab another can of Coke Zero. You said, I just can't be fucked. I'm, I was trying to watch it, you know, I was like trying to squint and, oh, it's picture by picture. What are you guys doing over there? What a load of shit. Fucking terrible. Picture by picture. I'd be few, like, over here when, when football, uh, sorry, soccer, whatever you want to call it, when they're going on, we don't have commercials. We're not like NFL, we have commercials. Like, I'm a huge fan of NFL, and I'm a Falcons fan. Um, 
and the reason why I'm a Falcons fan is because my partner has a family member living there. So I'm like, that could be my excuse. Because then if I ever go to America again, it'll be to Atlanta to there. So I'm like, that's my excuse. So I'd love to go to a Falcons game. And with that being said, there's so many adverts in NFL. It is the biggest money grab in the world. You must be livid. Unbelievable. Anyway, where were we? Um, yeah, we, there we are. So the second round, so Kemba has the armbar. I'm there squinting, putting on my spectacles uh, to try and see it in the picture and picture. And then it looked like time was going to run out. Um, and the time ran out. He had an armbar, but the time ran out. Uh, and then the third round, Kemp hit a rolling Death Valley driver, and that got a two, and that was a time run out. Round of four, this was good psychology. He obviously basically got him beat at the end of round three, so Kemp's there waiting and waiting, and then as soon as the bell rings, he charges over there, but he gets hit by the Dominator. One, two, three, Leandro wins and retains. Love these rules, man. Generally really enjoyed the rules, really enjoyed the match. I thought the story of... If it wasn't for the rounds, Kemp would have had that. And it, it's, it's it's just really good stuff. Uh, D'Angelo is really good as well. Really talented, like his promos. Um, I remember enjoying him versus Carmelo Hayes at one of the NXT shows. Then we went backstage. We have the GM. She says that he wanted Ethan Page to sign the contract, but she has to check it over as his demands are mad. Chuck Williams then says he needs to. she needs to sign it. Give him whatever he wants, because I want him. Thread throughout the show. You're not tuning up because you want to know if Ethan Page signs. <laughs> Wonderful. Then we head backstage. We had Mia Yim talking to Jordan Grace. <coughs> <coughs> oh, my days, my friends. Poor, poor, poor baby. Oh, my days. I'm abs- my, I, I tell you what, I started this show and I felt good. And then as this show, I feel like my hay fever is developing more and more as we speak. I'm going to absolutely blow my nose after this. And I apologise in advance if I sound grotty and tatty. And, and I, and I apologise. Anyway, so we have backstage Mia Yim. She's talking to Jordan Grace. Uh, basically, they're saying it's crazy. TNA is working with WWE. All six of the women from the six-man tag get involved and pipe in. And then some weird shit happened. This Miss NXT was like, oh, I know something more important than your knockouts championship. Being Miss NXT. And I'm, uh, Grace is like, what the fuck is this? Get me back to fucking TNA. This was gold. I've said this is gold and this is good an awful lot. And I only gave the show a strong tie. Imagine how good I'll be if I say it was uh, magical. If it was actually really good. <coughs> we had an inside look at Baser versus Lola Vice. Uh, they have an underground match at Battleground. If you don't know what underground is, there's no ropes. Basically, blood sport. And, you know, Vice is a former MMA athlete, as is Baszler. So, on paper, it should be good. A uh, simple story around it. Vice thinks Baszler's jealous of her and Baszler's sick and tired of people forgetting it, what a badass she was. And they had, in this video package, they had genuine, legit MMA fighters because obviously they now are owned by TKO, which own UFC also. So they, this felt like a UFC video package. And he had Josh Barnett on there. Um, Tiago Alves. Loads of guys on there. Uh, MMA fighters and it felt so legit it is it was really really good really well done shout out to W's production team uh, or if it was someone from UFC that put it together regardless you d- deserve yourself a pat on the back then we had Izzy Dame or Dime we'll go with Dame against Natalia uh, Natalia gave Booker T her sunglasses uh, she, she obviously does the Bret Hart entrance and then Booker T starts dancing and going, yeah. Like, oh, it's so good. He is so funny. I love Booker T, man. Um, Natalia had this really good match on Raw with, with uh, Kiana James. And doing that, in doing so, I forgot how good she is in the ring. And she totally deserves more respect online. She really does. Um, <laughs> she's incredible. Um uh, also, I like the fact that this match is taking place 24 hours after she said enough is enough and it's time for a change. Um, this match is pretty damn good. Natalia hit a nice set of powerbomb for a good near fall. Uh, there was a roll-up exchange. 
as a roll-up exchange and Natalia got the victory. Fairly short match, but it was enough time for Izzy Dane to get some experience working with Natalia, which is also part of the point of NXT. And I'm glad Natalia got the win. It'd be good to see Natalia maybe go on in an NXT women's title run. That could be fun to see. You know, she's saying enough is enough times for a change. I'm going to go down to NXT and I'm going to conquer that division. I'm going to come back bigger, better and stronger than ever. Then we had Gallus, Joe Coffey, Mark Colley and Colley. Coffey and Wolfgang. Uh, they have a in-ring promo. I'm going to say this now. Um, I used to, I mean, Joe Coffey was mega over here in the UK before he signed for NXT UK. Um, I remember watching him in like Progress and stuff and uh, Rev Pro. And I can't believe they're still there. <laughs> when 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 uh, when they came out, I'm like, fucking hell, they're still there. Good old Wolfgang, remember him from ICW, the, the Scottish brand. Um, but there's some good promos here, actually, especially from Joe. Um, Joe Coffey said that if they cared about TikTok and shaking their asses up and down, then they would be more respected. Uh, Mark Cullen says, we're not here to be influencers, influencers, they're here to be pro wrestlers. Joe says he is making sure that he will leave Battleground as North American champion. That led to Obar Demi coming out. He's an NXT North American champion. Says, if, you, uh, if any of you guys from Gallus help Joe on Sunday, you will be taken out. Wesley comes out through the crowd. Gallus attacks Demi and Wesley. He'll heat. Boom. Made Joe Coffey look strong. Made the champion look like there's potential. He'll lose it. Um, I didn't really care for it. I thought the promos were good. I just don't really care about the match. I don't really have a guy I'm rooting for um, out of it. So I'm, I'm just not really bothered by it. Uh, then we had uh, the six women's tag. Lots of women's wrestling on the show, which is good to see. And they've all got good characters. Well, some of them do. Uh, they've all got character and kind of their own story. So I will give them that. Um, so we have Kalani Jordan, Nash Legend, Fanon Henley against Mia Yim, Sol Ruka and Jade Parker. Again, preview of the Battleground, the six-woman ladder match where the woman becomes the first ever NXT North American Women's Champion. Uh, Parker in this one hit a really nice reverse suplex. She's so good. I think out of all of them in there, uh, she's, I'd say she's probably my favourite. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does. Uh, Sue Ruka got a hot tag. She hit this. Uh, she went for a springboard and then mid-air Henley hit a really big forearm. Uh, Mia Yim and Parker then start brawling. They're obviously teammates. Uh, Fallon and Jordan then start brawling. Obviously, again, they're teammates. And then Roka hits. And I tell you what. One of the most impressive moves I've seen in a long time. She hits a springboard with one leg. Right? So you've got the wrestler facing the ropes. And you've got her facing the ropes. Basically, imagine an horse cutter. But add a flip. It was unbelievable. Uh, the last three to five minutes was really enjoyable. Uh, very impressed with the in-ring that these women did um, and provided and, and, and worked hard. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that made me look for Because I'm like, if this is going to be kind of some of the spots we see in a six-man tag, imagine this in a ladder match and a title on the line and more time. I'm sold. I'm actually sold. And then we had Ethan Page. He had his contract signing. Um, Ava, the GM, was in the ring. She brought out Ethan Page. No music, just loads of booze. Loads of we want trick chants. Uh, Ava then says she won't sign the contract due to the due to the demands. And then Page says, well, NXT has lost eight of its top stars in the draft. So you need me. Really good promo. I, as I said at the top of the show, he's a WWE guy through and through. His promo, waste in AEW. What the fuck are you doing, Tony Khan? What the fuck were you doing? Absolutely ridiculous. Um, Trick Williams music hits and he comes out. The crowd love it. Um, I'm going to say it now. I don't know if... Because this always used to happen but in NXT. You know, the, the guys would be there at the full sale. They'll be over as fuck. They'll go to the main roster. They'll be sh they'll be nothing. The crowd don't care. And I know it's a different time. But... Would Trick Williams, let me know in the comments, would Trick Williams be successful on the main roster? I'm not sure. Time will tell, my friends. And regardless, uh, Trick tells Ava to give him what he wants so he can kick his ass. He, at the start of the promo, he started a few times. It took me out of it. Um, it just takes you out of the moment sometimes. 
is what it is. Uh, Page then signs the contract. Says if Ava signs the contract, he gets a title shot. So basically it's, you know, you sign that and I get a title shot. Trick says at Battleground he'll be hearing a whoop whoop that trick. And then they have a face off and that closes the show. Heading into Battleground we know the main event now of Ethan Page against Trick Williams for the NXT World Championship. And I like the fact that Page hasn't had a match yet. And his first WWE match will be for the NXT Championship. Because then that really establishes him as a top guy in that brand. Win, loss, or draw. So I'm happy with that. I hope Ethan Page wins. I really do. Watch this guy for basically a decade. And I really hope he does well. And that's one thing of beauty about watching kind of the, the AEWs, the TNAs, the Ring Hub. Oh, not watch Ring of Honor. I refuse. Refuse. I don't care if they're doing Brian Danielson versus Nigel McGuinness. I'm not watching it. I'm not watching Ring of Honor at principle because that brand is dead. 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 Pointless. Waste of time. Get rid of it. What a waste of purchase. If you bought it for the library, sweet. Fair enough. If you're that rich, good for you. But the damage you've done to that brand is beyond repair. It has no identity. I do not know anyone who watches it. I don't know anyone who wants to watch it. I can't remember the last time I watched it. The last time I had a pay-per-view on, I literally was sat here. The TV was on, and it was WrestleMania weekend, and we just finished Stand and, and Deliver. Um, and if you remember... Excuse me, if you remember, there, there's obviously a gap, isn't there, between Stand and, and Deliver and Mania. So here in the UK, it was evening time now, so like, oh, we'll pop to the chippy. Um, we got some uh, fish and chips, living the dream. We're like, we'll come back, we'll watch some Ring of Honor. So we sat down here, on here, and they showed fucking... Uh, what did they show? It was Carl Fletcher came out, and I was like, fuck off. And that's no disrespect to Carl Fletcher. I like Carl Fletcher, I think he's a great wrestler, but that's not Ring of Honor. I've seen him on AEW, so why would I care? I'm basically watching another AEW show, and I watch enough AEW to want to see more. So with that in mind, guys, fuck you, Tony Khan, for not pushing this guy to the moon, and hope he does well. He definitely deserves this. Well, everyone deserves You You get what you get, don't you? So that in mind, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Apologies for my unwellness. I'm going to go play my nose. With that in mind, stay safe, stay well. I'll be catching your asses down the line.